and and I took beginning of the week we wanted to see like how's he going to look. You have no idea when he gets out there, and I think for all intents and purposes, he's looked really good. Um, with Khalil being out, did I read that right that he's out? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, this will be two games now. If you'd put him on IR, it'd be three. Was it basically a thing of if there's even a chance it's not? You're weighing Khalil versus adding a guy at the end of the roster. Yeah, well, that's the all that we're going through is just kind of seeing like this past week, very similar to last week, and now we had the bye coming up, so we'll get to see kind of where he's at, how he feels. Um, I think the bye will come at a at a good time for us to see where he's at, you know, and and just talk through it and get more opinions as to medically where we're at with our our trainers and doctors and. And, uh, and just basically have a plan either way. Okay, we got them, great. And then all the IR stuff and everything that comes with it, we just got to decide if we go that route, what's our backup plan? And if we don't, then get him ready for the, the following week. Do you know when Nick Foles is going to be back? Uh, I don't know for sure, 100%, but his is is uh, is the illness, you know? So he, he's, he will be out he, for, for this. Originally, he was listed, I think, for his personal or – Yeah. Yeah. Are you confident that he is coming back? When? This season? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very confident of that. Yeah, he, he's just his is his is an illness and um, you know, that's where it's at and um, but he'll he'll be back, yeah, for sure. Now with with Khalil, uh, were you guys able to take some points of like what the what you know, San Francisco seemed to try to attack the fact and I assume most teams are gonna do that yeah. if he's not there. Can you take anything from that, or is it so different because it's a totally different offense? I mean, can you learn something from last year? Yeah, we can. We always do. I think Sean does a really good job in the coaches of, of kind of understanding. Even when Khalil is playing and then he comes out, you know, you, you can kind of get a feel for um, how teams want to try to attack or, or go at us with or without him. So uh, the biggest thing is just the next guy uh, stepping up and having opportunities. And then, and then our coach has got to be able to – Make sure that understanding that from the other side, offensively, how they want to try to attack us, or you know who's the next guy that they want to either run to or run away from, and then we got to have a plan, a counter for that. Yeah, I, I think you could just feel um, really his demeanor in the meetings uh, is probably where you sense a lot of the, the growth of confidence there. And then out at practice, he's, his tempo in and out of the huddle, his communication with the players in between plays, I think is there's more and more to that. As he runs more plays together with them, um, there's discussions after it, but not all the time. But if we hit a throw and he liked the route or if he missed a throw, uh, or if it's something with protection with the O lineman, talking to him that way, I think he's becoming a little bit more vocal. Yeah, with uh, Cairo, his consistency, and then he has that random miss last yeah. week on, on an extra point. Do you get a chance to, I guess, talk to him about that or figure out what happened there? And no, I didn't. I didn't ask one thing about it. I didn't. You know, it's uh, um, it's th that kicker business is is crazy. With you know the the, I mean, it's it's every game is different. I mean, you look at you just think back to I remember going into our Green Bay game with Mason Crosby. You know, the, the game that he had when you have like seven attempts in a game, he missed three field goals, but yet he hits the game winner, you know, and it's it's I have so much confidence in Cairo and, and where he's at that um, I think he's I think Tabe said it the other day. He's been pretty good with extra points throughout. And so uh, he knows what he did and didn't do a hell of a lot more than what I know what he did and didn't do. So I, I haven't really uh, gotten into that with him. I, I don't I'm sure you, no one really talks to him about the streak, but like it's a what streak. Yeah, is that something internally you guys are like kind of rooting for though? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, without a doubt. But we don't talk about it. <laughs> Fields came in with it seemed like to us at least from day one with a very veteran demeanor and mm -hmm. presence, very serious. Yeah. I mean, very steady. Have you seen? It's probably subtle because of just the nature of his personality. But have you seen him? kind of step into more of the role of the starting quarterback? Yeah, I have. What have you seen? Um, just again, as I was telling Colleen, the, the communication, um, the growth there I've seen probably more at practice with the growth of with the play, his own players and teammates. In meetings, we're, a lot of times, whether if we're in an install, we're together, but then we break up and go individually. 
So he's separate. You see growth with his communication with Coach Flip and Andy and Nick in the room uh, that way, probably asking more questions. But the biggest thing is, is really the other part, too, that, again, we're here we are however many weeks in, and, you know, the tempo of the cadence of him calling plays in the huddle is so much different and better than it was. Even you think back to, obviously, the Cleveland week, in and out of the huddle, so much stuff on his plate. Right now it's – um, he tries not to look at the wristband as much as he can so he can see the play as he calls it. He still does at times, which is good because that's why we have the wristband. But I think his growth, his confidence of what happened in this past game, the things that he did well, um, his open communication with us on plays that he likes and doesn't like, which is natural for every quarterback, it's definitely there, and, and it's fun to see. That last one you mentioned about him communicating about plays that he likes and yep. doesn't like. If I'm remembering this right, I think that when there was a time where you kind of were taking suggestions or, or yeah. taking input, there yeah. was a week where you specifically did that. I think he said he didn't right. suggest anything. Correct. And now, this, it's a little if bit. Had that meeting again on this coming Tuesday, it would go differently. No, uh, I don't think so. I think what you're what you're talking about was right after the Cleveland game when we talked more about big picture identity of the offense. What I'm talking about with him is more specifically with a maybe within a play on a certain route that we could tweak a route and make it a little bit different within the route or the concept. You know what I'm saying? So if there's four routes in a play or five routes, he might want to tweak a route a certain way or run it or the progression of it might want to change within that play. The other meeting that you're talking about was more big picture of the offense. That's where I'm talking. And, and I can't – if we had that meeting again right now after him starting the amount of games he started, he, he – there's probably a more bigger percentage of him maybe saying something now than than after his first start against Cleveland. Have you seen him? Have you seen him? Uh, just on that note, real quick. Um, a lot of times, a quarterback has to hold somebody accountable. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's younger than everybody else that he's playing with, though. Have you seen him do something like that on the practice field where he has confronted someone that needed it? Um, yeah, and not in a not in a negative way, but in a in a constructive way. Without a doubt, he doesn't care who you are, how many years you've been in this league. I've seen that, you know. And, and so um, I know I joked about it several weeks ago about it with Jimmy on one play, with Graham, Jimmy Graham. But there's times where if he sees something, even with A-Rob, if there's something that he sees because he wants to get it right, or if A-Rob sees something, they're going to go to him and say it. That's what I think is pretty neat to see. Um, by no means is he ever reserved in trying to be hesitant to talk to a veteran player because of something that he thinks that he sh – should or shouldn't say based off of what just happened. Not at all, and I love that about him. It would make sense that Andy would be a pretty nice resource with, yeah. with, with Pittsburgh and, and, and just playing in prime time, you know, something Andy did a lot that new to Justin. Did you see that this week in the quarterback room where we were able to kind of feel the way that Andy's experience kind of helped Justin this week? Yeah, we were, we were talking about it, um, Kevin, and I think it's – I could be wrong. You guys will have to double-check me, but – I want to say it's it's close to 18 times that Andy has played the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, around there, give or take some games. Uh, that's a lot of games to be playing against that defense and, and stuff. So he's a valuable resource uh, regardless of who we're playing. And um, just when you're watching tape specifically, he's seen a lot of different things from this defense, and so he can help out that way. Uh, and, and Andy has been phenomenal in this process of helping Justin grow. I mean, just absolutely phenomenal. Maybe we'll see Andy just each week get more and more comfortable. Because, I mean, it was obviously yeah. going to be a little awkward. I have. First, like, like, just for instance, um, this week at, with Andy running, you know, their, the Steelers' offense against our defense, he was, he was making some throws that were ridiculous out there. I mean, just the accuracy that he was throwing the football and what he was doing. We were just, this, just a half hour ago talking about the week that he had for the look team. Uh, he's, and and, and to, to your point, the very first week, obviously, that's hard. That's different. And now you start to get a little bit, not comfortable, but you understand where things are. And, uh, and Andy's been just, you know, unbelievable from day one. John Filippo was talking this week about the uh, peaks and valleys of a rookie quarterback's development. It's not always just a straight linear yeah. development. When you were trying to decide whether to go with Justin earlier in the season, did you think of – hypothetically, a game like the Tampa game is something that's going to happen. Yeah. There's going to be one of these disaster games yes. with him, but there's no other way to – you can't fast forward through those mistakes. Right. Yeah, and I think that that's probably – if you if we could fast forward five years from now and, and in five years from now come back to that question that you're asking, 
I'll bet you, not just Justin, but most quarterbacks that go through games like that, if they're if they're built the right way, will will be happy that they've used it to, to, to be a positive and use the experiences of mentally how tough that is. Um, so we knew when the decision was made, yes, it was. there's going to be some times where, I mean, I think we can all understand, like that still happens with veteran quarterbacks where you have a game where it just doesn't go well and, and you got to be able to bounce back and recover. So with a first-year quarterback, um, that is going to happen. But now we got to insulate him and make sure that he understands um, you're not going to win every game like you maybe did in college. And so mentally, how are you going to bounce back? And that's what he has, you know, after those, after Green Bay and after Tampa Bay, the game you're saying with Tampa Bay, I think the way he handled that shows right there his growth of being able to mentally bounce back and have the game that he had last week um, is significant because it helps his confidence now for this next coming week. And now you're going to play another defense on the road that does a bunch of different things that's going to test you again. And so how do you get through that? Well, we got to help him. The players got to execute around him. The coaches got to coach around him. We all got to do our thing. The defense has to play. That's how you help a rookie quarterback. You know, rookie quarterbacks succeed with great teammates. And then that's how they gain their, they gain their, um, they learn to become a better quarterback all around by having great teammates and then by winning, man, it just pumps it up. Patrick Mahomes is like all of a sudden kind of going through some struggles, all the success he's had. I don't, is that an example of kind of what you're talking about? That like no matter where you are in this league as a quarterback, like you're going to have peaks and valleys. And yeah. I don't know if your conversations with Coach Reed have changed at all with what they're going through right now, but. I mean, so, is there, any cor- is there any connection there? Well, I just think, like, you know, I can think of several instances of not just rookie quarterbacks, but teams in general. Um, I think about, I forget what year it was. I think it was 2000 and, was it 2014 or 15 when everyone had the Patriots written for dead? They were supposed to be done. Tom Brady was done. <laughs> it was that, it's, you know, seven, seven years ago. Six seven years ago, they were no, they were and they won the Super Bowl that year. But everyone had them; ri- they were done. They couldn't, you know. Garoppolo is going to come in, and and that that's just this 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 game. There's so much parity in this league. There's a lot of good teams. There's a lot of good players. You see it every week. And so, to your question about you know Kansas City and Patrick and Coach Reed, um, I can promise you this: they'll get through it because Coach Reed knows how to handle it, and because I know how Patrick is as a quarterback. And so you have, t- and then the teammates around them and the coaches around them. That's what happens. Um, and I think so for us, here we are, we lost three games in a row. So it's a great opportunity for us to be able to show as, with Justin as a rookie, with us as coaches, to be able to use it to get together and bounce through the ebb and flow of the NFL season and stay positive in all of it.